Hey everyone, in this video I'll show you how I animate something like this. And the methods I talk about in this video will apply to other 2D effects animations as well. So let's get started. I'm going to be using Photoshop to animate this. But if you're trying something similar, you can really use any app that allows you to 2D animate. For the drawing part of this video, nothing will really be software related. However, I will bring things over to After Effects later down the line to pimp things up with some effects. And that part will require that one has After Effects. I have what's called a video layer in Photoshop here. This allows me to move up and down the timeline and draw on individual frames. I have a full tutorial video here on my channel on how you can animate in Photoshop, so give that a watch if you haven't tried this at all. As mentioned before, we're animating a comet or a flying ball of fire today. But you could try anything really. It could be a water splash, an explosion, something kicking up some dust perhaps. I want to try to stay quite general in what I talk about so that you can apply it to other subjects as well. I've started drawing some guiding lines that will describe the overall motion my fireball is following. I want the camera to be fixed on it so that we are traveling with it, but it should leave a quick trail of smoke behind it. And the burning rock in the center should constantly be evolving. Burning from the front and backwards, so we get a pattern going in a backwards direction through it. That will make it seem as if it's flying quickly forward. To achieve this I will have to imagine drawing a continuous distorted waveform going through it. I will only animate a handful of frames here, because we can then loop the sequence, making it play for longer. We might need something like 5 to 10 frames to not make it feel too repetitive. If there were only 2 or 3 frames, you would definitely see it flicker between them. But anywhere above 5, I think will start looking alright. Here's a quick tip for you guys who know a bit of 3D animation, and this can help bypassing this first step. I have two simple geometries here, a sphere that represents the burning ball and a long cone-like trail behind it. I can then run some displacements through these. This is just a noise shader that has an animated property to the z-axis of the noise, moving the noise pattern from the front and backwards along the trail. This gives that effect we're after. I can then export this simple animation as a hardware render or however you fancy rendering it out. With this method, I'm only really interested in the shape and the movement of this noise pattern as a reference for my drawings. So if you don't want to draw this from imagination, then something like this might aid you. Now this following part is what I find the most interesting. Rendering this in Photoshop with colors, so it feels three-dimensional and stylized. I want to avoid it feeling flat, so I make sure to pay attention to the forms that I'm rendering. This fireball has a spherical shape, so the texture we apply to it must wrap around the object. I am doing this manually and not using a texture on the 3D shape that I showed you earlier. I think by doing it by hand, you end up with a more stylized result. I also have an infinite amount more control this way, as I decide where every pixel goes with my brush strokes. I really love the practice of painting and drawing as it allows us to visualize what we can imagine. It is always a challenge of course, but it's a really liberating feeling to not only rely on the technology to solve it for us. For 2D effects, lighting is something we can really play with. Smoke, dust, rock or water or whatever your effects are made up of will cast shadows and take on light, so have them react to a light source. This is a key component in making them feel three-dimensional. Let me quickly give you a different example that might suit this better. Let's imagine an explosion of dust. I will first describe this with some lines before adding any shading. The silhouette shape of it in a single color is obviously looking completely flat. But let's try to imagine we shine a light from this direction down on it. 
Here I find it's important to really think in 3D and not only have the explosion expand in an outwards direction on the X and Y axis, but also on the Z axis towards us and away from us. I want to express the direction the dust is traveling in, so designing the shape so they have a favoring side in the direction they're expanding can help to get that across. Obviously, once we animate something like this, several frames will get the feeling of movement too. But I still think it's important that we can tell all this from a single frame. Back to the fireball. As the core of this thing is a burning source of light, I have not added shading to that, but with yellow and orange, I've mapped out where the hotspots are. And as it cools down, it transitions into a brown smoke that then has a layer of shading to it. I think it's cool if we create some variation in the frames, so sometimes the molten fiery bits peek through into the smoke section of the trail and vice versa have some cooler smoke appear higher up on the core and then travel backwards. All this helps to show the direction it's flying in. For a high speed thing like this, any inconsistencies are quite forgiving and each frame is kind of random. As long as it feels as if we're going in one direction, you can't do much wrong. Were it a slower evolving smoke trail, you would need to pay closer attention to how each element transitions from frame to frame. So chaotic stuff is always a bit easier. Here you can see that the yellow shapes on the center front facing side of it are larger than the shapes towards the upwards and downwards facing sides. As standard drawing in perspective goes, anything on the surface of a plane facing away from you at an angle will appear squashed, like the textures on the upper side here. We now have all the drawn elements sorted. Let's open up After Effects and give this some extra love. Whoa. We can actually take the Photoshop file and drop it straight into After Effects and set it to act as footage. This allows us to preview it like a video file. Any changes I make to that Photoshop file is directly updated in there. Pretty neat, eh? If anyone wonders why I insist on using Photoshop for 2D animation, this is one of the good reasons. We can give this a gradient background, going from a warmer tone at the bottom towards a slightly cooler one towards the top. On an adjustment layer, I can add a glow effect, and this really makes the hot core shine. Glow is a great way to make your drawn 2D elements pop a bit. We can then create a new null object and parent the animated fireball layer to that. Let's animate it slightly, scaling up over time. And then we can also add a wiggle expression to its position properties. That will make it shake randomly, which adds to the chaos. A great plugin for After Effects that I use in almost all my work is Real Smart Motion Blur. It's a paid-for plugin that simulates motion blur for any footage. Adding a bit of motion blur to your effects animations can make them feel a bit more integrated and add a sense of speed and direction to the shapes. Another plugin that is also not free but has been a vital friend over the years is Trap Code Particular. This is a fantastic particle simulator for After Effects that I've been using for, I think, the past 12 years probably. With this I can create some sparks emitting from the fireball, as well as some flying by in the opposite direction. All adding to that speed and chaos. I have a full 35 minute tutorial where I talk about how this plugin works over on my Patreon page. And I will leave a link to that down here. There you will also find a ton of videos and tutorials that you don't see here on YouTube. So if that sounds interesting to you, then head over there. We can make some cloud chaos as well with this plugin. You can really do a lot with it. Finally, remember those 3D mockups I made as reference for the trails? We can drop some of those into the background here and make a copy of the fireball animation that we've made and only use the front part for these. As they are further back, having them be simplified like this works okay, I think. This final shot I created for the game Skies of Chaos. Now, if you're trying to make something similar, remember to alter things and take the concepts from this and apply it to your own work. It makes no sense to straight up copy what I've made, even if you're just practicing. 
because if you're gonna spend time on something, rather make it your own. I hope you've learned something from this video. I have a lot of fun video concepts coming up on this channel, so make sure you subscribe to not miss any of those. Big thanks to all my Patreons for their support. Now go and watch another one of my videos. There'll be one here suggested for you after I've disappeared. I'll be waiting for you over there. <laughs>